Hey guys, it's James again. Today on TFB TV, we are talking the uh, uh, top five pistols of all time. And I mean auto-loading pistols. Revolvers aren't going to be in this list. And in my opinion, this list kind of sucks, and that's because you guys made it. I mean that I hosted something called the March Gatness tournament back in March. It's exactly what it sounds like. We did a March Madness style competition online. Me and the editors at TFB put together a list of guns that we thought were the best out there. We got some help from our folks on Patreon, and then we did a public poll for everyone to vote on. So if you don't like this list, just like I don't like this list, then you can only blame yourself. I promised everybody I would do a top five video based on that list this summer. That's what I'm doing today. So without further ado, let's start with number five. And in my opinion, number five should be number one or number two. That is the SIG P226. The 226 is a real heartbreaker for me because it lost by one vote in the quarterfinals to the venerable CZ75. But notwithstanding the fact it only made it to the quarterfinals, it still got 1,248 votes, good enough to bring it to fifth place. In short, the SIG P226 is a full-size double stack 9mm or 40 or 357 SIG that comes in an alloy frame. And by alloy frame, I mean it's not a steel frame gun like, say, the CZ75B or the 1911. So that means that you get a great compromise between weight and durability. The 226 is one of the most reliable and most durable guns of all time, but because of its alloy frame in lieu of a steel frame, it's actually the second lightest gun on this list and the lightest metal frame gun on this list, notwithstanding the fact that it's a double stack full size that you can get a full grip on and it holds 18 rounds of nine millimeter with flush fit magazines. Now the 226 went into production in 1983 and I know something else that went into production in 1983. It was a pretty sexy year for guns and it was based on the SIG 220, which came out in 1975. The 220 is like the father of the 226, even though they're really only like eight years apart. So I guess it'd be kind of weird if your dad was like only eight years older than you, but you know what? Let's not get bogged down in those details. But the 220 is basically a single stack 226 that's most popularly in the United States in 45, but there were a lot of nine millimeter 220s in Europe. The 220, probably like every single other gun on this list, was created to be a military or police sidearm, and the first military to adopt it were the Swiss. That's pretty high praise, right? Fun point of fact, when officers retire from the Swiss military, they can purchase their duty 220s for 30 Swiss francs, which is just a tick over 30 bucks US. The 226 is a double action, single action gun. Now, while SIG makes double action only, single action only versions of this gun, for purposes of this video, with all these models, we're really going to be talking about kind of the originals. So this is traditionally a double action, single action, which means that the first trigger pull is double action only. When you pull the trigger, it cocks the hammer and then releases it. That takes about 13 pounds of pressure, but all the subsequent follow-up shots take about six pounds of pressure. The 226 doesn't have an external safety, so this, in a way, almost acts like a safety. Your first shot, it really takes a lot of pressure to send that first round off, and all your follow-up shots are a lot lighter and easier to shoot. You can also cock the hammer if you would like your first shot to be a six pound light trigger pull. A lot of people like the feature, that double action, single action trigger, not only for the safety reason I mentioned, but because it offers something called second strike capability. In other words, you can pull the trigger and if you get a click instead of a bang and you know you've got a live round in there, if you have a hard primer or something, then you can pull that trigger one more time, allow you to drop the hammer on that round, and maybe that'll set off that hard primer. Some people like that about it, some people don't. Another innovative feature about the SIG 226 is how the breech locked against the slide. With the 1911, the CZ75, the Browning High Power, they all used a series of interlocking lugs, while the 226, 220 used an enlarged breech that locked into the slide to oversimplify the process. But what that means to you is that it's really, really easy to disassemble 
and it still locks up like a bank vault. As I said earlier, the 226 is insanely durable. It's very easy to find a 50,000 round plus SIG 226 or 220 that looks like it has almost no wear and it still shoots just as well as when it came out of the box. Fit and finish of the anodized alloy frame and the slider are superb, especially if you have the nitron coated stainless steel slide. So not only do you have stainless, which is naturally corrosion resistant, but you also have nitron over that, which is abrasion resistant and virtually corrosion proof. And last but not least, this gun is used by the Navy SEALs as the Mark 25. If that isn't the best endorsement that a handgun could possibly get, I don't know what is. So this gun, it might be number five, but in my heart, it's in my top three. But speaking of guns that would not be in my top three, the 1911. In particular, you guys voted for the Wilson Combat Classic 1911, which is funny to me because that's a $3,000 1911 that beat out the original 1911, the Colt, in particular the Series 70. So I was very surprised to see a boutique 1911 win on behalf of the 1911, and it got 1,393 votes, putting it just ahead of the SIG 226. Now the 1911 is treasured especially by Americans, not only for its heritage, it was designed by American John Moses Browning, and for its many, many decades of service under the US military. And as 1911 people like to point out, it was the gun that won two World Wars as if it did it itself. It was the sidearm of the US Armed Forces for World War I, World War II, Korea, all the way through Vietnam. So not only does the 1911 have a long, distinguished history of service, but nowadays it's seen in the hands of most users, not only as a self-defense pistol, but as a tournament gun, because with its single action trigger, it may have one of the best triggers on the market. If you remember me describing the double action trigger earlier, where when you pull the trigger, it cocks the hammer and then releases it, well, you guessed it, a single action trigger, all it does is release the hammer. That means you need something to cock the hammer first, whether it's you doing it manually or in the case of the 1911, when the slide returns, it cocks the hammer. You get guys that can tune these triggers down to three pounds or less, and that's why you really see the 1911 and the CZ-75 in more tournaments than any other gun. This gun served essentially from 1911 until 1986, 75 years, and in that 75 years, the US military bought three million of these guns. John Moses Browning was personally present in 1910 when the US military selected the 1911. They fired 6,000 rounds through it, dunking it in a bucket of water to cool it off, and it had no failures. The 1911 is a single stack 45 caliber. So while the 45 is arguably a more powerful round than 1911, or at least it shoots a much bigger bullet, it's a single stack gun, which means the magazine only holds one stack of rounds, so that limits the capacity. With the SIG 226, we were talking about 18 plus one rounds for a total of 19 rounds of nine millimeter in a flush fit magazine. With the 1911, you're looking at eight rounds plus one. So it has a severely limited capacity. And the 1911 began to show its age in the 80s, and that's when the US military decided to replace it, ultimately replacing it with the Beretta 92, which does not have a spot on this list. It only got 551 votes. In my opinion, the full-size 1911, the all-steel frame version weighing at over 40 ounces, is too heavy with not high enough capacity to compete. You have guns like the Springfield XD and the Glock 21, the SIG 227, that all use double-stack 45 magazines but weigh as much as or much less than the 1911 while performing all the same, if not being slightly more reliable. So while the 1911 has, in my opinion, certainly shown its age, you can see why this great American pistol has a spot in the top five. Moving now to number three with 1,460 votes, it is the CZ. 75. Again, not one of my favorite guns. You guys may remember I called this one one of the top five overrated guns. However, I get it. 
This gun is one of the most popular guns in history, certainly one of the most cloned guns in history, right up there with the 1911, and a very popular tournament gun because like the 1911, you can tweak the trigger on these CZ-75s to be pretty sweet. Design of the CZ-75 began in Czechoslovakia in 1969, and this gun was designed from the ground up, from scratch. This didn't borrow from any other pre-existing designs, well, at least not heavily. And it's for that reason it has a lot of design innovations, like the slide in frame construction. That is, the slide rides inside of the frame, which is the reverse of almost every single other handgun out there. It's interesting because that gives the CZ-75 a really tight lockup and contributes to exceptional accuracy, which is part of the reason you also see this gun competing a lot in tournaments. Not to mention the CZ-75 also has a hammer-forged barrel, which lends itself to incredible durability and accuracy over time. The CZ-75 was originally designed for 9mm, and it had a 16-round double-stack magazine, unlike the 1911, which we just discussed, which has an eight-round single-stack magazine. So you're looking at around double the capacity in the 75 over the 1911. The CC-75, like the 1911, also allows for cocked and locked carry. You can cock the hammer so you have that ultralight first trigger pull, but you can lock your safety in place so you have to disengage that safety before you send off that first really light trigger pull. CZ claims they've sold over 1 million CZ-75s and that it is the most widely used government, military, and law enforcement handgun in the entire world. I don't know if it's true, but if it is, you can see why, because the CZ-75 does bring a lot to the table. And while I'm not a fan of the CZ-75, I can't argue that it deserves a spot in the top five. Moving to number two, this one was a shocker for me, the Browning High Power. They got 2,201 votes. Now, there's no question the High Power is a great gun. Again, very storied, just like the 1911. In fact, you could really see it as almost the European or the Commonwealth counterpart to the 1911. It was even designed by John Moses Browning for FN of Belgium. Unfortunately, Browning died in 1926 before the design was finalized in 1935. Despite being designed in the 20s and 30s, it was way ahead of the game at the time. Remember, we're talking about double stack and single stack magazines a lot in today's list, and the Browning was one of the first ones out there, at least one of the first adopted pistols out there to use a double stack magazine, which gave it a 13 round plus one capacity. And while the Browning High Power is a single action gun, it actually has a so-so trigger as opposed to the 1911. And that's because it has a magazine disconnect safety. That is, you can't fire a Browning High Power without the magazine being inserted. There's an easy fix for that take the magazine disconnect safety out. The Browning High Power was designed in response to a French solicitation for a new pistol. They wanted something that must be compact, have a magazine capacity of at least 10 rounds, have a magazine disconnect safety, an external hammer, and a positive safety, all things that the Browning High Power has. The solicitation specified that it must be robust and simple to disassemble and reassemble, and must be capable of killing a man at 50 meters, which basically meant they didn't want anything smaller than nine millimeter. Now, the French never ended up adopting the Browning High Power, but the Belgians did. The Belgians adopted it in 1935 as their service pistol, and this is, of course, right on the cusp of World War II. They saw the writing on the wall, saw that the Germans were going to invade, so what did they do? They sent the plans for the high power to the British, and the rest is history. Commonwealth countries virtually adopted the Browning high power after that, and it's also an interesting fact to note that the Germans, when they occupied Belgium, manufactured the FN high power for use by Axis forces in 1940. A lot of people don't realize that the high power got a lot of play in World War II because a lot of the focus is on the 1911. In any event, the high power is almost as storied as the 1911 and was certainly ahead of its time whenever it was created and remained relevant all the way until its retirement just last year in 2017. And that's why it is the number two pistol on this list. Now moving on to the number one pick and one of my most favorite guns of all time, 
Wilson with 2,201 votes, the same as the high power, but it won in the finals in a direct faceoff with the high power. That is the longest introduction in the entire world for the Glock 19. As with most of the pistols on this list, it started with a military solicitation. The Austrian military was looking for a new sidearm. They were going to replace the P-38s that had been in service since World War II, were way outdated. They needed something, again, a double stack 9mm that was more modern and sophisticated. The Austrian military wanted their new sidearm to be able to shoot 15,000 rounds of regular power 9mm without issues, and then on top of that to be able to fire a proof load of double powered 9mm, that is twice the pressure of standard 9mm, and not fail. Now there's not a lot of guns that can do that. Gaston Glock heard about the solicitation and in 1982 got together some of the most brilliant minds he could assemble from law enforcement, military, engineering to design this pistol. Glock designed this gun to be robust, yet lightweight and easy to produce by using a polymer frame. And it's the only gun on this list that uses a polymer or a fancy word for plastic frame. It passed all of the Austrian army's abusive reliability tests and it was adopted by the Austrian military and then several other European militaries before becoming a NATO standard sidearm. Glocks are reputed as not only being some of the most reliable guns on the planet, but the most durable too. That's gross. It's not unusual to find a still functioning Glock 17 or Glock 19 with over 100,000 rounds through it. Again, what was great about the Glock 17 is it was very high capacity, holding 18 total rounds versus the nine rounds total in the 1911. But using the polymer frame, a loaded Glock 17, fully loaded, weighs 25% less than an unloaded 1911. And while the Glock 17 was a fantastic pistol, it was also a full-size pistol, and a lot of people regarded it as being too big for concealed carry or even for people with smaller hands. So in 1988, the Glock 19 was produced. The Glock 19 is a slightly shorter barrel and grip, but it has all the same features that you love about the Glock 17 while holding 15 plus one rounds instead of 17 plus one rounds, but it will take Glock 17 mags or any other Glock magazine so long as it's longer than the 15 round magazine. The Glock 19 quickly became Glock's best selling model because people realized it's great for concealed carry, it's reliable, compact, and lightweight, but it also works as a duty gun and was adopted in that capacity by many police agencies. The Glock 19 is the only gun on this list that is striker fired. That is, it doesn't have a hammer like the other guns. With all the other guns in this list, you're relying on a hammer to strike your firing pin, which then hits your primer, which detonates your primer, sets off your powder, and sends that bullet whizzing down the muzzle end. The Glock 19 has a self-contained striker unit inside the pistol. When you pull the trigger, you are releasing that striker, allowing spring pressure to take it forward to do all the same things that the hammer-fired guns do at that point. Point. It's a very simple mechanism, it's reliable, and it's contained fully within the slide of the gun, so that makes it easier to keep grit and dirt out of the inside of the gun, unlike the exposed rears in the hammer-fired guns. Glocks are durable, their finishes are known for being virtually rust-proof, and they're reasonably inexpensive at typically under $500. Now, why do I personally think the Glock 19 is one of the best guns out there? Well, again, you can use it for concealed carry or it's good enough to use as a truck gun or a bedside defense gun or a duty gun. It's also one of the most reliable guns out there. It doesn't require a lot of maintenance. The durability is intense but it's also lightweight and relatively high capacity. There's a lot of third-party support out there so you guys can get triggers, different sites, 
There's all kinds of frame and slide work that you can have done to your Glock 19s. It's simply one of the most popular guns in the world, and that is reflected in this poll where the Glock 19 took the number one position in the March Gatness poll, and therefore is the people's choice. So I bring you your champion, the Glock 19. Guys, I wanna say thanks a ton for watching this video. Thanks a ton for all you who went on there and voted. Maybe we'll do it again next year, and I'll do another video. And while I didn't really agree with y'all's choices, I really do appreciate your participation. I also appreciate our sponsors, Blue Alpha Gear, they make the best belts in the industry, and Ventura Munitions. Ventura Munitions is how I feed my Glock. Those guys make some of the best ammo out there, and they're also a great ammo retailer. But most of all, I gotta say thank you to you guys for watching, for supporting us on Patreon. Guys, please go help us out on Patreon if you can. But without you guys just watching every single week, this wouldn't be possible. So I wanna say thank you, and I will see you next week.